What's up, people? Today, I'm going to be talking about using finite state machines in Haxflixel. So a finite state machine is, is a great way to kind of organize different states for, for a scene, for a character, and that sort of thing. And you might have seen it in other game engines or other programming languages um, before, but I'm going to focus on Haxflixel in, in this video. So I've got, I've got this game running, and this is what it looks like. I've got some assets from Kenny. Um, I've got this character that moves when you press the buttons. If you hold on to shift, the character walks. When you let go, they'll run and you can jump with the character as well. I don't know what's going on with the frame rate. I think because I'm recording at the same time, the frame rate's a bit low, but when I'm not recording, it's, it's 60. It's a smooth 60. So let's have a look at the code for this. Um, so we have the kind of four different states, idle, jump, walk, run, all the buttons that you press and a lot of if statements, a lot of nested if statements, and it's a bit difficult to follow. Um, so the benefit of a, of a FSM or finite state machine is this will be organized in such a way where you can look at it and know what to do. And it will also fix this bug where um, if you're holding on, if you're jumping and you hold on to shift, the player kind of slows down mid air and that's something that we'll hopefully fix. So first of all, let's think about how we'll tackle this before we write any finite state machine, I highly recommend uh, putting a diagram down or, or mentally thinking about how to tackle this. And, and there are many ways we can do it. I've drawn a few diagrams to kind of explain um, how to do it. But first, let's look at the basic or kind of simple first FSM diagram people might look at. So I'm using the classic diagram design instead of the um, kind of boxes for states, which you might have seen. But anyway, so this is a traffic light. It, it changes states from red to amber to green and it changes based on the time so it starts off red in my example and then goes to uh, amber and then green and then back to red now i know traffic lights sometimes go back to amber before going to red but in this case it's, it's kind of a triangle state machine always goes in one direction and it goes to the next state based on the previous state so it will never go red to straight to green or from green to amber to red it will always go in this direction of the arrows so with that in mind, let's have a look at um, the states for, for our scene. So you might think that there are four states, right? So jump, walk, run, idle. So with that in mind, let's um, look at this diagram. My face is in the way, so I'm going to try and move it a bit here. All right, so initial state is idle when, when you first start with the player. Um, when you move and press shift, the player walks. And um, when you let go of shift, the player will run. Um, and if you're an idle, when you move the keys, play or run. If you press shift, they'll walk. Um, and if you press the jump button, they'll jump when you're on idle, when you're running, and when you're walking. And I've missed the state here, which is when you release the jump button, you'll go back to these states. As you can see, this is quite complicated. And I wouldn't imagine how I'd go about starting to create a state machine from, from this diagram. Um, it's definitely not like this. It's not, it's not straight and easy to follow. So I've drawn it this way intentionally. As you can see, all the states have, have a jump kind of, a button to jump. And I haven't drawn this here, but a, a way to go back to the state was before, before the jump. So there are kind of two main states that are similar to, I guess, the traffic light. There's this, which is non-jumping, and there's this, which is jumping. Because to get from non-jumping to jumping, you, you press the jump button. To get from jumping to non-jumping, you release the jump button, and the player touches the ground. So those are the, the two states I can see initially from, from this, and so that looks like that. So we've got grounded and then jump. Um, so I apologize for this image, it's, it's a PNG. It's meant to be a JPEG, but uh, there are some lines here, which you can barely see, but anyway. Um, so you're grounded initially, which is this stage. And to get from grounded to jumping, you press the jump button. To get from jumping to grounded, you release the jump button and then the player touches the ground. So if we wanted to, we could actually zoom in on the grounded state. So which is this one, we'll zoom in on that. And we could tidy up this a bit as well. So we could say, okay, you're standing. And when you press the, the key to, to move, you're moving. And when you release, you see you're standing, so that's idle. And in the moving state, we could further um, have a nested state chart, state diagram, and say, you're running initially when you press the moving button. When you press shift, you're walking. When you release shift, you're running. So for this video, I'm only gonna focus on this bit. So just grounded and jumping. But if you wanted to, you could have nested states, finite states if you wanted to. Without further ado, let's start coding. I'm gonna code in the next video, not this one. So yeah, take a break, take some time to digest that. Um, I forgot to mention at the beginning, 
if you want to follow me, if you want the um, initial code for all of this, it's like just three files, um, you can get them either in my Udemy course or in my Google Classroom course. Both the links for those will be inside the description. So yeah, you'll get this whole file um, with all the code and you can get started and follow along with me. Cool. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.